morning. It's November 14th and it's snowing this morning. 25 degrees outside, 26. Um, so recently there have been a number of attacks on great works of art. You know, paintings by Monet, uh, Warhol's soup box or soup cans, things like that. Throwing food at them, uh, trying to mark them up. Uh, the same people gluing their hands to the wall or gluing their hands to works of art. And this is meant to be a protest over global warming, the continued consumption of fossil fuels. And my initial reaction, of course, is revulsion. How dare they do this? But that's, it's not fair to just ask that cold or just make my assumptions. Am I right? How do I know I'm right? So start digging into, you know, some basic philosophical approaches. And one of those is asking, well, what if they're right? What if this is an effective form of protest? What if, you know, throwing mashed potatoes on Monet will make a material difference in global warming and in fossil fuel consumption? Now, when I started thinking about it that way, I realized I have a favorite painting in the world. It's a Jackson Pollock mural. It was painted in, I think, the late 30s. Um, it was commissioned by Peggy Guggenheim, and it belongs to the University of Iowa collection. I attended the University of Iowa. And it's... Last time it was appraised, it was about $250 million. I'm sure it's worth more than that now. It's an extraordinary painting. It's the most important painting in Jackson Pollock's career. And, of course, a very important painter. And... I have spent literally hours in front of this painting just staring at it. it it's one of my better teachers, honestly. I, I learned a lot from just looking at that painting. But if I could reduce fossil fuel consumption across the globe by 1%, I would take gasoline, pour it on that painting myself, and set it on fire. If I thought it would work, I would do that because it's worth it. I mean, it's just a painting. And something to think about is global warming isn't just a neutral impact on the environment. We pay a cost for it in human lives. People are dying to give us gasoline. And, okay, do I dare walk in front of this car? Uh, small aside, we could talk a lot about right-of-way at intersections, and this is a pedestrian intersection, but in practice, right-of-way equals mass times velocity. I'm very cautious about walking in front of cars, especially when there's snow on the ground. I don't trust them to stop if they're not planning on it. So, anyway, back to our art problem. So, yeah, what if they're right? What if this works? What if this alone is enough to hold the world hostage? What if this is enough to draw the right kind of public attention? Then I think they're right because people die to give us gasoline and people 
who are not born yet will die because of our gasoline consumption. Global warming is an incredibly critical problem. We are approaching, if not past, various tipping points that could be irreversible, where we are just stuck and we cannot fix the atmosphere again. We can't get out of this. We would flood the coastlines, we would lose our ice caps. Um, we could possibly reverse the Gulf Stream and wreck Europe's climate. Um, there's lots and lots of bad things that can happen. And the human cost of this could be billions of lives. There are billions of people on Earth. I think most of them actually live on coastlines. As they get dislocated, as their areas become effectively uninhabitable, as the food chain gets destroyed, as we wind up with resource wars for what's left, or closed borders, and we don't care if the people on the other side of that fence die. This could be billions of deaths. I'm saying this to impress upon you the critical importance of dealing with global warming, of dealing with fossil fuel consumption. So in that sense, the protesters are correct. We should be doing anything. And in that sense, given the limited performance of governments so far on this subject, I'm okay with environmental terrorism to a degree. I am certainly okay with environmental civil disobedience. If we have to break the law to reduce fossil fuel consumption or destroy things to stop fossil fuel consumption, maybe even kill people to stop fossil fuel consumption, I think I'm okay with that. Because, you know, from a utilitarian point of view, it makes sense. Um, but as far as the question of destroying art goes, from a utilitarian point of view, is this actually a good idea? So, this gets back to another long-termist view of mine, which is that great works of art are the property of all of humanity. I don't care what individual or what institution currently, quote, owns, unquote, a Monet or a Pollock or a Warhol. They belong to humanity. They belong to people who will be born a thousand years from now as much as they belong to us. They are part of human cultural experience and should be forever because they are great representations of humanity. So deliberately destroying great works of art that belong to all of humanity, that's a tremendously bad thing to do from a moral perspective. It's not harming people physically, but is harming all people in other ways. So, yeah, this is a really bad place to be. And I'm going to stop and pause here for a second so you can see over my shoulder I think I got it, yeah. That is Minnehaha Falls in the background. Um, it's a slightly famous waterfall. It was written into one of Longfellow's poems, The Song of Hiawatha, and it's been almost bone dry this fall. There's very little water flowing over it. It's starting to get ice now, which is good. It gets very beautiful in the winter where the ice forms where the waterfall was. At any rate, um, 
So destroying art in order to make a point is morally wrong, right? clearly morally wrong. I don't find a good solid argument. There are people like, yeah, whatever, destroy it. We don't need it anymore. It's the past. I don't buy that. And that's because I have experienced art. And I've felt it change me. So, yeah, destroying the art is bad. But letting people die for fossil fuel is worse. And without digging too far into the philosophy, I think destroying a thing is not as bad an act morally as destroying a person. And again, fossil fuels and global warming are literally, explicitly killing people. And they're killing our planetary environment, the world that we expect to live in. This is bad. So if, and generally, you know, doing something morally wrong to prevent something that is much more morally wrong is generally a moral act. It's the right thing to do. It's the trolley problem, you know, in morality. You know, would you kill one person to save a dozen? Uh, and the trolley problem, I think, is overrated. The answer is obvious. But if destroying art would make a material difference in the consumption of fossil fuels, then it is absolutely the right thing to do, in my opinion. And in, it's not just a gut feel. This is at least putting some moral thought into it and weighing the alternatives. The question then is, well, does it work? Will it work? And that's the sticky part. I don't think it will. I don't think this is an effective protest. In particular, the people who are being most angered by it seem to be people who are potentially allies of this movement to end the use of fossil fuels and try to deal with global warming. People who are sympathetic to the cause, who agree with the cause. And they, so they agree with the end, they just don't agree with the means. And I am, based on this, I am one of those. But I think more than most, because what I'm seeing is a lot of simple revulsion. People who are just angry that this is happening and how dare these spoiled children act like that. And certainly that was my first reaction. That's not necessarily the way we should handle these things. Gut reactions are often right, but not always right. Common sense is only a first order approximation of reality. Um, and if these acts of vandalism or environmental terrorism, if you prefer, against works of art are not an effective means of protest. If they're not going to move the meter or make any change in human behavior and they are immoral acts destroying things that are the shared property of all of humanity, they're wrong. They are simply plain wrong. Now, we could get into a long discussion about why people choose to do morally wrong things feeling justified, feeling right. 
and I have a lot of opinions about that, but I think that gets away from my base argument here, which is just if the people attacking art are right, then they're right, and we should support them. We should agree with them, and if it means losing great paintings, so be it. But if they're not right, they are very, very wrong. And I think they are not right.